do subscribe to ekeda channel and press bell icon to get updates about latest engineering hsc and iit je main and advanced videos hello friends in this video we are going to study about the measurement of angular velocity we will see the various transducer used for the measurement of angular velocity their construction working advantages disadvantages and their applications so let us start with our topic so what is angular velocity angular velocity is defined as the rate of change of the angular position of a rotating body so if an object is rotating about its axis so the change in position of that object with respect to time is the velocity angular velocity so we can say that angular velocity is related with the objects which are rotating okay so in some instruments and devices if any of the object is rotating so if we want to find out the speed of that or velocity of that uh, object we will use the angular velocity transducers for that now for the measurement of angular velocity the device which is used is called the tachometer so tachometers are the transducers which are used for the measurement of angular velocity now these tachometers they can be electrical type or magnetic type tachometers they can be either electrical type of tachometers or mechanical type of tachometers so first we will study the electrical tachometers the electrical tachometers or we can also say the electromagnetic tachometers they are of two types the dc tachometer and the ac tachometer so these tachometers they are generally the tachometer generators so instead of saying them tachometer generators it they are called tacho generators okay the combination of these two words that is dc tachometer generators they are Commonly called the DC tacho generators. Okay, so there are two types of uh, electrical tachometers or electromagnetic tachometer generators: DC tacho generators and AC tacho generators. First, we will study the DC tacho generator. now the difference between the dc and the ac tacho generators is that the magnetic field that is generated either it is dc in nature or it is ac in nature okay so the output voltage also generated either it will be a dc voltage or it will be an ac voltage so just the difference is the dc and the ac part okay means the magnetic field generated it is either alternating in nature or it is the simple magnetic field now let's see the first the components of the dc tacho generator the main parts of this are we are having a armature 
then we are having a permanent magnet and a moving coil voltmeter so these are the main components of the dc taco generator let's see its diagram then we will see its working so as i have said that a permanent magnet is present so these are the two poles of those permanent magnet north pole and the south pole in between it we are having an armature this is the commutator and the speed to be measured so you can see that the main parts are the armature the permanent magnet and the moving coil voltmeter now this armature is connected to the object whose speed we want to measure this is commutator brushes with the help of this it is connected with the moving coil voltmeter and this armature is placed in the magnetic field of this permanent magnet now as the armature is connected with the object whose speed we want to measure so as that object is rotating the armature is also going to rotate so as that object is rotating the armature is also going to rotate in the moving coil due to that the magnetic field is there in the mag uh, because the permanent magnet due to the presence of this magnet there will be a magnetic field so the armature will be revolving in this magnetic field due to that the flux will be produced and output voltage will be generated so this output voltage is measured with the help of this moving coil voltmeter and the amplitude of this output voltage is proportional to the speed of the object okay so let's see it's working that first the armature whose speed is to be measured then due to the rotation of that machine armature is also going to revolve in the magnetic field now due to this movement of the armature in the magnetic field an emf is generated and this emf which is generated it is proportional to the flux and the speed now the flux of the permanent magnet is constant so emf is directly proportional to the speed now this emf is measured by the voltmeter okay so this is how we can say that the output voltage which is measured by the voltmeter that is equal to the speed of the moving object or the machine okay
now we can calibrate this output uh, this voltmeter in terms of speed so that the readings which we are getting from the voltmeter they are in terms of the speed of the rotation so moving coil voltmeter is going to have uniform scale because the emf and the speed they are linearly proportional with each other and we can calibrate it directly in terms of speed now the polarity of this output voltage which is measured by the voltmeter it gives an indication about the direction of rotation that in which direction either clockwise or anti clockwise the object is rotating so polarity of output voltage indicates the direction of rotation so in this way the angular speed of the object is measured now you have seen here that the output voltage it is a dc voltage okay so it's a dc taco generator now comes the advantages and disadvantages of this dc dc taco generator advantages the first advantage is that the direction of rotation is indicated by the polarity of the output voltage so not only the magnitude but also the direction is given uh, can be measured by this dc taco generator now here the output voltage that is measured it is in the range of 10 millivolts per rpm and such a small amount of voltage can be measured with the help of conventional dc voltage voltmeters so there is no need of using some um, if uh, modern voltmeters are required the conventional dc voltmeters can also be used for the measurement of the output voltage so these are the advantages of the dc taco generator now comes its disadvantages now as you have seen that in the diagram with the armature we have connected the brushes so due to the presence of these brushes maintenance is required okay so brushes can create the maintenance problem the input resistance of the meter it must be high as compared to the output resistance of the generator okay so this is going to uh, limit the armature current because uh, due to the movement of the armature flux is produced and current is also produced so armature current is limited due to this so input resistance of meter should be high as compared to the output resistance of generator that is a limitation on this also because this instrument it involves the moving parts so due to that friction problems can also occur and due to friction the wear and tear and damage can occur of the instrument parts so these are the disadvantages of the dc taco generators now next is the ac taco generators
Now the difficulties which are occurring in the DC TACO generators to remove those difficulties AC TACO generators are huge. So in these AC TACO generator, instead of the armature here, a rotating magnet is present. This rotating magnet can be either a permanent magnet or an electromagnet. Now here we are having a coil. So there we were having the commutator and the brushes with the help of commutator brushes armature is connected with the moving coil voltmeter. Now here instead of armature we are having magnet instead of the commutator and the brushes we are having a coil which is wounded on the stator. So the problems which are associated with the commutator and brushes they are being removed in the AC TACO generators. The coil is there and this is wounded on the stator. Now here when the magnet starts rotating due to the rotation of the magnet there will be an EMF induced in the coil. Now this EMF the amplitude and frequency of this induced EMF is proportional to the speed of rotation. So if we can measure the amplitude and frequency of the EMF we will be able to measure the speed of the rotation or we can say the angular velocity. Let's see the diagram of this AC TACO generator. This is the diagram for the AC TACO generator. You can see instead of armature we are having the permanent magnet and this permanent magnet is connected with the object which is rotating whose speed we want to measure. Now due to this permanent magnet moving in a coil, coil is wounded around the stator. So due to the movement of this uh, permanent magnet EMF is induced in the coil. Now this EMF it is uh, the amplitude and frequency are measured this EMF is first rectified okay and then it is measured with the help of the moving coil voltmeter. So amplitude can also be measured and frequency can also be measured. Okay. So with the help of this we are only measuring the amplitude with the help of this moving coil voltmeter. So for amplitude we are using the rectifier. And then after coming out of the rectified with the help of a moving coil voltmeter the magnitude is being measured. Now if we are measuring the frequency, 
then we can use the digital counters okay so that frequency is a measure of the speed of the rotation now let's study the limitations of this ac taco generator the first limitation is that when the output is low then at low output the frequency is also low means at low speed frequency is also low and when the frequency is low the ripples are present in the frequency and it is very difficult to remove these ripples so they can cause an error in the measurement now at high speed also there are some problems that at high speed also the frequency increases and due to the increase in the frequency the impedance also increases so at both high speed and low speed there are some limitations at low speed frequency is low so ripples can occur and at high speed frequency increases and due to increase in frequency impedance also increases so that is the limitations of the ac taco generators so uh, there are two electromagnetic type of taco generators dc taco generators and ac taco generators now there is a third type of taco generator also which is the drag cup type of ac taco generator this is also an ac taco generator but the difference here is that the rotor is in the form of a drag cup that is why it is called a drag cup rotor ac taco generator let's see the construction of this also it's that so this is the diagram for the drag cup rotor ac taco generator you can see it consists of a rotor and a stator okay this is the shaft okay and uh, these are the windings of the stator you can see that the stator it consists of two types of winding one is the reference winding and one is the quadrature winding okay now these two windings they are placed at 90 degree angles with each other means that these windings are at space quadrature with each other okay so you can see that the quadrature winding and reference winding they are at 90 degree with each other this is the rotor rotor is a thin aluminium drag cup okay so it is in the shape of a drag cup that is why this is called drag cup uh, rotor ac taco generator okay
so stator is in the form of two windings reference and quadrature winding which are at 90 degree with each other rotor is there which is a thin aluminium drag cup it is in the form of drag cup so it gives a very low inertia and due to the aluminium it is a highly conductive so due to this uh, highly conductive aluminium and the low inertia of the drag curve this rotor can be represented as a short circuited conductor because aluminium is highly conductive so current can easily pass through it so we can uh, call this rotor as a short circuited conductor so this is the construction two main parts are there stator and the rotor okay now an alternating current volt uh, alternating voltage is applied to the reference winding and output is measured from the quadrature winding so you can see in the diagram here we are having the reference coil so across this reference coil the an ac voltage is being applied which is given by vr cos of omega c t okay and output is measured from here so output is our vt okay output is measured from the quadrature winding and input is applied to the reference winding now due to this alternating voltage and uh, the flux is induced in this reference coil okay due to that ac voltage there will be a flux which is induced in the reference winding okay and due to the rotor speed or we can say due to the rotation of the rotor and emf is induced in the quadrature winding because we know that when the rotor is rotating due to the speed of the rotor current is generated because rotor is acting as a short circuited conductor so current will be generated this current is going to generate a flux in the quadrature winding and that flux is going to induce an emf in the quadrature winding so due to the rotation of the rotor an emf is induced in the quadrature winding so we can say that this emf is proportional to the speed of the rotor so as i have said that we are measuring the output across the quadrature winding so this output emf across this quadrature is proportional to the speed of the rotor and by this we can measure the angular velocity of this rotor okay so just the difference here is that we are having the stator and the rotor stator is having two windings reference and quadrature 90 degree angles uh, at 90 degree angles with each other they are placed so as the direction of rotation is changing the 
output voltage is also going to change its phase suppose that once it is rotating in this direction so output emf is induced okay quadrature emf we are going to measure now suppose it is moving in the anti clockwise direction so output voltage is going to be 180 degree out of phase with the input voltage okay so the phase of the output voltage is also indicating us the direction of rotation okay so we can say that the input we are applying to the reference winding input is uh, inducing an emf flux is generated emf is being induced due to the rotation of the rotor a flux is induced in the quadrature winding that flux is going to produce an emf and emf is proportional to the speed of the rotor So the output EMF which we are measuring across the quadrature coil that is proportional to rotor speed. Also this EMF is in phase with the voltage which is applied to the reference coil. Okay. Now as the rotor is rotating in one direction if the speed of rotation or the direction of rotation is changed the voltage is going to be 180 degree out of phase with the applied voltage that is reference voltage so if we talk about the advantage of this drag rotor drag cup rotor ac taco generator the advantage is that the phase of the output voltage gives an indication about the direction of rotation In one direction the voltage will be in phase with the reference voltage in another direction it will be 180 degree out of phase with the reference voltage. So next advantage of this AC taco generator is that they are rugged, inexpensive also they give a ripple free output. and there is a linear relationship between the output voltage and the input linear relationship between output voltage and speed So these are the advantages that uh, not only the magnitude but also the direction of rotation can be measured. Also there is a linear relationship between the output voltage and the speed. Those, these instruments are rugged, inexpensive and they give us a ripple free output. Now comes its disadvantages. Now if we see the output voltage then output voltage is equal to the product of speed and the input voltage. Okay so if we do some proper calibration and we take this input voltage as constant then only the output voltage is proportional to the speed okay so proper calibrations has to be done so that this input voltage is kept at constant so that the output voltage which we are getting that will be proportional to the speed okay then only this can be measured
Now the calibration of these uh, drag cup AC taco generators, they, this is very difficult. So that is the disadvantage of this instrument that they are very hard to calibrate and we need calibration because we want to keep this input voltage as constant. Also when the speed is very high, then at high speed there is a non-linear relationship between the output voltage and the speed. So that is also a disadvantage that if we are measuring very high speeds then there will be a non-linear relationship between the output voltage and the speed of the rotor. So this was the drag cup rotor AC taco generators. So now up till now we have studied the taco generators which are used for the measurement of angular velocities. These taco generators are electrical in nature. They We studied the two types DC taco generators and AC taco generators. Now comes the digital methods which are used for the measurement of the angular velocity. Earlier methods which we have studied that is the electrical tachometers they are limited to the speed the, the speed measurements their speed measurement limit is very narrow means they can measure the speed up to 10,000 rpm now if we want to measure very high speed which is above 10,000 rpm then we will use the digital methods okay talk about the advantage of the digital methods that why they are more preferred then first advantage is that these methods do not have any direct physical contact with the device whose speed we want to measure so no direct physical contact is there between with the measuring quantity measuring object also because no direct contact is there so no load is imposed on the shaft okay so due to these two advantages these digital methods are preferred over the electrical methods okay because in electrical methods we have seen that the uh, device whose speed we want to measure with that device are measurements uh, or the measuring uh, element is being sensing element is being connected but in digital methods no direct physical contact is there so no load is imposed upon the shaft now these digital methods they involve the digital pickups and these digital pickups can be of two types one is the photoelectric type And another is the inductive type. So digital methods involve the digital pickups and these digital pickups are of two types, photoelectric and inductive. First we will study the photoelectric transducer. So as it is used for the measurement of angular velocity, we can call it as tachometer. Let us first see its construction.
so this is the diagram for the photoelectric tachometers here you can see that we are using the photoelectric that is light is being used for the measurement of the speed the main parts of this photoelectric tachometers they are the disc this disc is there and this disc is having a number of equidistant hole uh, equidistant holes on its periphery means on its periphery holes are there and these holes are at equal distance with each other so this disc is having holes all along its periphery and these holes are at an equal distance with each other Now on one side of this disc we are having a light source and on the other side there is a light sensor. So when this light source is going to uh, emit the light then when two holes they are in continuation with each other then this light is going to pass through these holes and is this sensed by this light sensor. Now because this disc is rotating because it is connected with the shaft and shaft is continuously rotating so disc is also going to rotate so due to this rotation if an opaque part means opaque part is the part where no holes are present if that comes in front of the light source then no light is going to pass through it and the light sensor is going to uh, observe here no light okay whereas if holes are present then the light is going to pass through those holes and it is being sensed by this light sensor so the speed of rotation of the disc is proportional to the pulses which are generated okay because every time the light sensor is going to uh, sense the light it will indicate uh, it will generate a pulse and this pulse can be counted by an electric counter so the frequency at which the pulses are generated that is proportional to the speed of rotation of this disc okay so we can find out the speed by measuring the frequency of the pulses. So frequency at which the pulses are produced by the uh, light sensor and they are counted by the electric counter. So that frequency is depends upon the number of holes in the disc and also its uh, speed of rotation. Okay. Now number of holes in the disc is fixed it is constant so we can say that frequency is directly proportional to the speed of rotation so we are having an electric counter which can be calibrated directly to give the readings in the rpm because number of pulses is equal to the speed of rotation so speed that is rotations per minute rpm we can measure the speed directly from the electric counter now comes the advantages and disadvantages of this method as you have seen that the output of this uh, uh, photoelectric tachometer the output is a is in digital format okay because we are measuring the number of pulses okay so output is in digital format so we can use this uh, uh, tachometer photoelectric tachometer in a digital instrumentation system
also the amplitude of the pulses is constant because every time the rotation is being done we are having a light source which is also emitting the light at a constant rate so pulse amplitude is constant and because the pulse amplitude is constant it is going to simplify the electric circuitry so you can see that the circuit is also very uh, simple in it okay so that these are the advantages of this photoelectric tachometer if we talk about its disadvantage then its first disadvantage is that because here we are using a light source which is emitting the light so time to time this light source has to be replaced if we talk about the life of a light source then it can work for 50000 hours after that we have to replace the light source also if we talk about the accuracy of this instrument then accuracy of this method depends upon the errors which are occurring in the pulses and to reduce these errors we have to minimize we have to take care of these two factors that is gating period and the number of pulses generated per revolution so to have good accuracy we have to minimize the errors and these errors can occur due to two factors the gating period and the number of pulses generated per revolutions so if we can control these two factors we can minimize the errors and accuracy can be increased now what is gating period gating period is the number of pulses which are passing in a uh, fixed period of time so if we can control that how many number of pulses are occurring in a short period of time we can control the gating period also the number of pulses which are generated per revolution it all depends upon the number of holes in the disc also the distance between the holes should be equidistant so that the pulses should be generated at a constant rate okay so these are the disadvantages of the photoelectric tachometers now in the digital methods we have studied uh, we studied that there are two types photoelectric type and the second is the inductive type so let's study the inductive type of tachometer which is called the toothed rotor variable reluctance tachometer so here there will be there will be changes in the reluctance the reluctance is changing means inductance is changing inductance is related with the coil okay so due to the changes in the inductance we can measure the speed of rotation okay let us first see its diagram so that its working will be clear to us here we are having tooth rotor so rotor will be there which is having tooth on it multiple tooths are there
So this is the construction of the toothed rotor variable reluctance. You can see here it consists of a toothed rotor which is mounted on the shaft. This is the shaft. And this shaft is the uh, means whose speed we want to measure. So with this shaft, this toothed rotor is uh, connected. Here we are having a magnetic pickup. This magnetic pickup is placed very close to this toothed rotor. So due to the rotation of the rotor, this uh, magnetic pickup, because it is containing a permanent magnet having a coil over it, so inductance of this coil is going to change. Now here we are having the uh, because of the changes in the inductance and emf is generated okay so the frequency of that emf can be measured with the help of the electronic counter and that frequency is proportional to the speed of the rotor so let's see it's working we are having first when the rotor rotates So due to the rotation of the rotor, the reluctance of the air gap between the pickup and rotor is going to change. Because this pickup, it consists of a permanent magnet. With a coil. Wounded around it. Okay. So because... Uh, Due to the rotation, reluctance is changing and EMF is induced in the pickup. Now this EMF, because uh, the output is, it is in the form of pulses, okay. So output is in the form of pulses which are having very different shapes different different shapes of pulses will be generated so the frequency of these pulses will be measured with the help of the electronic counter And this frequency is proportional to the speed of rotation. Okay. So if we denote speed as small n, then it is equal to the number of pulses per second divided by the number of teeth of the rotor. So number of teeth we know that it is constant. So we can say that speed is directly proportional to the pulses per second or we can say the frequency. So in this way the inductive type of method that is the tooth to rotor variable reluctance tachometer can be used for the measurement of speed by measuring the frequency and because the output is generated here due to the changes in the reluctance that is why it is a variable reluctance type now advantages if we see Then there are number of advantages of this method. It is very simple and rubbed in construction. Also it is maintenance free. Easy to calibrate. And because it is having a digital output, so the information from this device can be sent to any, can be easily transmitted.
so this was about the digital methods which involves the photoelectric type of tachometer and the inductive type of tachometer now not only there are electrical methods and digital methods for the measurement of angular velocity but there are the stroboscopic methods also which are used for the measurement of angular velocity let's have some brief idea about the stroboscope scopic methods in these stroboscopic methods the basic idea is that the instrument used is called the strobotron and this instrument is a source of variable frequency flashing light so this is stobotron uh, stobotron this uh, device is going to uh, generate a light which is of having variable frequency its uh, frequency can be adjusted by the operator now it works on the principle that because this method is used to measure the speed of the moving objects so it's work on the principle that when a strong light is flashed on a moving object okay and this object every time when the flash is being put on that object that object is occupying a given position means every time flash is occurring on it it is having or it is occupying a fixed position so it means that if the object is appearing to us as stationary okay so this same principle is being used in the strobotron here stroboscopic methods the strobotron is used which is the source of the light that is going to flash the light over the moving object the object we will mark uh, uh, on that uh, moving object we will mark a position okay so every time the flash is being put on that object we will see that mark that as stationary so the frequency at which the object is rotating that frequency is proportional to the frequency at which the flashes are being put okay so flashing frequency is equal to the frequency of the rotation that is the speed of rotation of that moving object so because a strobotron it is a source of variable frequency and its frequency can be controlled here so by measuring the flashing frequency we can measure the speed of rotation let us first see its diagram so this is the diagram for the strobotron here you can see we are having a calibrated strobotron means its scale is going to directly give us the readings for the speed of rotation now the shaft whose speed we want to measure it is connected with the disc on this disc a mark is being made okay and with the help of this strobotron we are putting a flashing light over this disc okay 
so every time whenever this light is being put over this mark because it is continuously moving this mark is going to occupy the fixed position means we are seeing the mark as stationary so it means that the frequency at which the flashes are being put that frequency is proportional to the speed of rotation of the disc because disc is continuously rotating and we are seeing that the mark is appearing as a stationary it means that flashing frequency is equal to the speed of rotation so in this way the measurement of speed can be done by measuring the frequency of the flashing light so that is the working of the strobotron or the stroboscopic methods now let's see the advantages and disadvantages of this method the advantage of this method is that it imposes no load on the shaft It is a very convenient method. For the spot checks, if we talk about its disadvantages, So disadvantage is that it cannot be used in surroundings where we are having light source in the surrounding environment. So where ambient light source is present. Also this method is less accurate. then the methods which are utilizing the digital methods okay so these are the advantages and disadvantages of the stroboscopic methods so in this video we studied the measurement of the angular velocity we studied first the electrical tachometers in that we studied dc and ac tachometers their working principle construction applications and advantages disadvantages we saw after that we studied the digital methods in that photoelectric and inductive type of methods are studied and in the last we studied the stroboscopic methods for the measurement of angular velocity so i hope that this topic is now clear to you thank you